Guys, we've got a big realignment update on the SEC's current plans in regards to what they want to do in response to the Big Ten's latest acquisition of USC, UCLA. I'm going to talk about that. There's a few other things, an NIL thing I want to hit on. Also, I'll give my quick prediction on what I think is going to happen in regards to realignment this summer because there's going to be a lot of stuff next summer but this summer do I think any other teams will be changing conferences I will give my prediction but guys we've got this big story SEC favors staying at 16 teams in latest realignment wave per reports and guys, this is like the fourth or fifth straight report I have seen say the SEC is not going to have a real response, at least right now, in the wake of the Big Ten adding USC and UCLA, which was kind of a response to the SEC expanding in the first place, adding Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, one of the SEC commissioners says, quote, we're positioned at 16 for a robust future. The need just isn't there in regards to more teams joining the SEC. And right now, this makes complete sense. There's no reason for expansion. But again, was there really any reason for expansion when the SEC had 14 teams and they already had the best conference in college football by far? No, but they expanded anyway. Of course, there always is a reason. It's more money. And that's why they expanded Oklahoma and Texas approached the SEC and the SEC accepts them and that kickstarts this whole realignment thing. And you've got this commissioner, anonymous, uh, or excuse me, an anonymous athletic director from the SEC saying, right now we're fine, we're content at 16 teams, we understand what the Big Ten did, we still view ourselves as the best conference in college football moving forward and it looks like it would take the Big Ten adding Notre Dame for us to see a real SEC response into them potentially adding more teams. And then that's when we get into super conferences, truly. Because right now, both leagues are going to be at 16 teams. I wouldn't call that a super conference yet. I think once you get up to 18 teams, then we can start labeling it a super conference. Um, it looks like uh, the person that was interviewing this athletic director asked if uh, Notre Dame potentially joining the Big Ten would force the SEC's hand and the administrator express confidence in one of college football's superpowers, a league that... Okay, so his response to that is why... Uh, I'll put our product versus anyone's product, so we're going to just add schools to, to add schools. There's no value in that. So yeah, th to me that doesn't make any sense. If Notre Dame goes to the Big Ten, the Big Ten becomes the most powerful conference in college football. SEC's whole thing is being the best, the most powerful, and if Notre Dame goes to the Big Ten and you don't do anything, you don't add Clemson, you don't add Florida State, the Big Ten has USC, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Michigan. They are the most powerful conference in college football. I don't care that you have Alabama. I don't care that you have Texas. I don't care that you have A&M. I don't care that you have Oklahoma. You would have to add more school. So him saying that the SEC wouldn't do anything if the Big Ten added added Notre Dame and expanded to 18 or 20 teams, I'm not buying that at all. I think they would 100%. There would be a response from the SEC to also expand and potentially tap into, you know, maybe the ACC, depending on the grant of rights deal. We're going to get to that. Maybe you want to go west. You want to bring the SEC to the west like the Big Ten did with USC, maybe go get Oregon, go get Washington. Uh, the SEC commissioner who has been mum on league expansion since Texas and Oklahoma announcement last summer is fine with college football playoff expansion or keeping the two semifinal system, but has delivered a warning recently that adding more teams needs to happen if other leagues plan to loosen his conference stranglehold a bit. Later in the conversation, uh, Sankey was a bit more direct about the SEC's dominance in the current system. We can stay at four, he says. The conference will thrive at four, period. That's not healthy for the rest of college football, but we can stay at four. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. I, I don't think they're staying at four. 
you know, my thought process has been we will see an expanded playoff in 2026 to 12 teams, not just for a competitive balance perspective, but from a revenue perspective, from a meaningful games perspective, because we all know the story of Kenny Pickett sitting out a New Year's Six game because it doesn't mean anything. You have to make every New Year's Six game mean something, and also you'll get more revenue. If you have on-campus games, schools will make more money. It seems like every decision is based off of money now with any college football athletic director, any you know conference uh, commissioner, that's why I think we'll get an expanded playoff in 2026. And these leagues are going to get huff harder. It's going to become completely unbalanced to the point where you're going to need an expanded playoff at 12 teams. And then we've got some Notre Dame talk in this article. Uh, it says Notre Dame is contractually obligated to join the ACC should the school decide to join a conference. Even if Notre Dame wanted to join the Big Ten, a buyout payment to the ACC is requi required. They, they, if, if Notre Dame is going to join a conference, unless the ACC changes their media deal completely, there is 0% chance Notre Dame would join the ACC. If Notre Dame's joining a conference, it's very likely going to be the Big Ten. If it's not the Big Ten, it's the SEC. Um, unless, because the ACC is getting really desperate. They're talking about making unequal revenue sharing so the schools at the top make way more money. But Notre Dame would just pay the buyout of the ACC and then join the Big Ten, in my opinion. Financially, it would make way more sense in the long run. Even if you have to pay a big buyout at the start, over time, you're going to make so much more money being in the Big Ten than being in the ACC if the ACC doesn't change the way their revenue structure works right now. If you're the ACC, you're desperate. You would love Notre Dame in your league. Because then maybe you become the third super conference, or at least it balances powers a little bit more. Although, does I mean, I don't even think it does, honestly, because like the, the Big Ten and the SEC are so high and above everyone right now. But maybe it helps a little bit. Maybe you can offer the ACC, or you can you can offer Notre Dame, you know, a better media deal. Um, the Irish buyout could eclipse a hundred million should they leave. Be so they're not going to leave before 2025. I think that yeah, there's no way they would pay that. But pa possibly after uh, Notre Dame headed to the Big Ten, Notre Dame, which is already in fantastic position financially as a national brand, is also nearing the end of its TV contract with NBC. The network, along with its Peacock streaming service, broadcasts the Irish home football games and pays the school $15 million per year. Wow, Notre Dame is getting crushed being an independent. So Big Ten teams stand to make... When USC and UCLA join the Big Ten, every Big Ten team will make $100 million per year minimum. That is the reported number. Notre Dame is making $15 million right now. Now it's going to get renegotiated because their TV contract is coming towards an end. And I'm sure Notre Dame could make $50 million per year. But it's still not $100 million. That's why I've speculated. I think the money is too much of an incentive Notre Dame will be joining the Big Ten at some point, in my opinion. ACC members unlikely to defect. The ACC's ironclad contract handcuffs members from leaving the conference. The ACC's future as a power player in college football is in doubt, but at least the conference is not in trouble of dissolving, and that's because of grant of rights contract with its 14 institutions. All teams are bond through 2036, blah, blah, blah. We already knew that. Um, maybe there's some lawyer out there that can get Clemson, <laughs> Clemson out of this horrible contract. That's what they're talking about. That would be the worst case scenario for the ACC. And then it says ACC Pac-12 partnership proposal has uh, critics. Yeah, it, I, I, I was told this was dead. They, they've been saying this is not going to happen. The ACC does not want this at all with the Pac-12. The Pac-12 is making last-ditch efforts to remain relevant. And then it also says the Big Ten is not targeting Oregon or Washington, uh, which we've already talked about. They're not targeting those schools, at least not right now. Those two schools don't bring en enough revenue to truly be enticing for the Big Ten. Now, should the Big Ten add Notre Dame... Maybe they go after Oregon. Or maybe the SEC wants to head west so and they go after Oregon. So there's potential situations at play there. 
Um, just a lot of stuff on, you know, realignment. But guys, what do I think is going to happen? I'll give you guys my timeline. I think late July, early August. Because remember, last year, the Texas-Oklahoma move to the SEC was not announced until like July 30th. It was like the second to last day of July or something like that. So I think we get another late July bombshell. And it's the four teams that have been discussed. Uh, Arizona, Arizona State, or uh, Colorado, and Utah. Those four teams announcing they're heading to the Big 12. That's I think that's the final realignment news of the summer. And then that would put Washington's, you know, Future in complete doubt. Oregon's future would be in complete doubt because the Pac-12 would be down to six teams. And at that point, the Pac-12 would be facing uh, total annihilation. Their conference would be basically dissolved at that point. If this happens possibly in late July, I think the Big Ten is staying at 16. We're not going to be hearing any more expansion on the Big Ten until next summer at the earliest. Same thing with the SEC. They've talked about it several times in different articles. The SEC is content with staying at 16 teams. They're not going to have a reaction to the Big Ten by adding more teams because we've got the SEC at 16 teams now. We've got the Big Ten at 16 teams. We've got the Big 12 possibly expanding to 16 teams if those four teams do end up announcing they're leaving the Pac-12 and joining the Big 12. The ACC is going to be dormant, I think, till next summer at the earliest. Um, probably even the summer after that. We'll see if the ACC works something out with their TV deal to make it better. You know, maybe the schools at the top get more money. But overall, guys, I think what happens is we get one more bombshell, and that is those four Pac-12 schools going to the Big 12. Uh, we've also got this. One year in, what have we learned about NIL? Um, yeah, so NIL is a complete train wreck, guys. Uh, and it's nothing like people are going to say, well, you don't want kids to get paid, whatever. It's not about that. NIL is a complete mess. You have teams blatantly cheating. Louisville, A&M, Miami. It's not even, you know, Oregon, Tennessee. This is not Florida. It's not hard to see. These schools that are blatantly weaponizing it, it is a total dumpster fire. And, I, you know, because there's just, there's no rules in place that are being enforced right now. Uh, so we'll see what happens with NIL. But, I mean, we're still seeing schools recruit well that normally recruit well. But it is interesting. Also, let me see if I can find this crazy rumor that you guys will really get a kick out of, I'm sure. I have so many photos, guys. I think I have like 1,700 photos. Uh, they're all screenshots, of course, on my iPhone. All right, here, here it is. <laughs> this dude is verified too. Uh, hot realignment gossip. Hashtag hot goss. I don't know. Uh, TCU people seem to think they have a shot at a Big Ten in invite if and only if Notre Dame joins. Okay, well, Notre Dame is not joining until 2025 at the earliest. Would assume two others go in that scenario. This would shock a lot of people, but Fox Big Ten looking at Dallas-Fort Worth does make sense at, to at least explore. So that is a breaking story that, TC, <laughs> that TCU could be going to the Big Ten. Is there any chance of TCU going to the Big Ten over a school like t uh, Kansas? No. They would take Kansas 100% over TCU. Uh, TCU is far too small uh, for the Big Ten to be considering. Uh, but I just thought that was funny. Uh, either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.